When in history did the use of liquid crystals emerge? So liquid crystals were actually discovered back in the 19th century in uh, 1888. Um, they were formed in biological systems. So things like your skin and, and many proteins and, and naturally occurring chemicals all have liquid crystal behavior. And it was actually found in, in some derivatives from carrot. Someone was just looking at heating this chemical between its liquid and it, cooling it down into its solid form and found an intermediate phase. Um, that was a long time ago and people looked at them and they were a scientific curiosity. But uh, back in 1968, there was a company called RCA in America where they'd been spending four or five years looking to see if you could use them in some kind of electronic device actually stood up at a press conference in May 1968 and, and showed the world the first liquid crystal display. And uh, a lot of companies got very interested in that. And it was only two or three years later that you had the first electronic calculator. Couldn't really have a portable calculator without some kind of way of displaying the numbers that you were using. And so the liquid crystals worked alongside the invention of, of the silicon chips and logic associated with calculation and the three things came together and you, you had the calculator in 1971 all from that so, so you mentioned discovery. The, the calculator but where else in our daily lives can we find liquid crystals well i'm a device man so i tend to think of liquid crystals as uh, where they are used in devices um but it's a very broad field, uh, includes soaps, it includes your skin, etc, etc. But in electronic devices and op optical devices that I'm interested in, uh, you find them all over the place. Basically, now your TV screen, maybe 40 inches across, and it has a thin a film of liquid crystal at the front end. It's the bit that's doing the work. It's the bit that displays the image. And that's the same technology as with, whether you use it in your mobile phone or in your laptop or your tablet uh, watch, if you have a smart watch, and, and indeed in your hang on the wall TV or your, your curved TV today. So liquid crystals almost have enabled the communications revolution that's occurred in the last 20 years. You can't imagine your life without the mobile phone and the touchscreen on the front and it being able to display anything from the internet. Well, that's all down to the power of this liquid crystal so, in, in the screen. So what exactly is scientifically a liquid crystal and how do they work? So if you imagine my molecules, I'm making a molecule now, say an organic molecule with a few atoms in it, and it's a long rod-like molecule like a pencil. If I try and make the crystal structure, uh, if I heat it up so it's a liquid, I'd just scatter the pencils around randomly. The liquid crystal phase is the bit in the middle where they're still not all in nice positions in an egg box fashion, but they're still all pointing in the same direction. And that's the liquid crystal. It flows around like a liquid because uh, there's no fixed position for the molecules, but they all point in the same direction and you can then move those in, in that direction with an electric field, for example. So if you take a, a normal liquid crystal, it's pointing one way, it would look with one particular color, say, and then you apply an electric field. The molecules are free to rotate around because it's liquid like but they will rotate around and change the color of the state and, and that's basically how all of the liquid crystal devices are, are working so how can a crystal which is typically thought of as a solid be a liquid is this not a contradiction the liquid crystal yes um it is it's a, an oxymoron that was used back in the 1920s a lot of people didn't like it other people call it the meso phases meso meaning between so it's between the crystal and the liquid phases uh, but it's stuck uh, it's a catchy phrase it's very memorable um precisely because you're right uh, how can a crystal be liquid the real essence of the liquid crystal though is that some of its properties are very much like a liquid if i showed you a bottle of it you'd think it looked like milk it just flows and you can pour it uh, and in that uh, respect it behaves just like a normal liquid but in this behavior of it looking different depending on which direction the molecules are pointing or indeed the ability to switch with an applied electric field all those are very crystal like properties so the liquid crystal reminds you when you hear that term of, of exactly what's happening so i think it's quite a, a useful term uh, so liquid crystal why do the liquid crystals in a television screen for instance not fall out <laughs> that's a good question um so the television screen actually uses very very thin amount of liquid crystal so it's only five microns thick so your tv is made of two pieces of glass 
Uh, one glass has got a, a transparent electrode on it, and the other has got lots of uh, transistor elements on, made out of semiconductors uh, on, on the surface of the glass that are going to drive the electric field across the liquid crystal. And these two glass plates are spaced past only five microns or so, and then around it the liquid crystal is sealed in with a glue seal. Um, that's not so much that it doesn't fall out, it's, it's so that it doesn't evaporate, if you like. The plates are so close together, gravity is not really relevant. Uh, it's held in place by the capillary forces between the, uh, the liquid crystal and the, the, the glass, just as if you had two glass plates very close together and you uh, got water to uh, appear between them. The water would pretty much stay there, it doesn't matter which way. way up. So how do you actually get the liquid crystals into the television screen in the first place? Uh, that's more complicated. Um, again, it's easiest to say that you use the liquid-like properties of the liquid crystal in that respect. Usually what you'd do is um, you'd, you'd make the two glass plates and space them apart in a clean room so there's no dust can appear and you can get the glass really close together uh, and you seal it around the edges but you leave a small hole and that hole is where the liquid crystal is going to be introduced. What you do is you put it in a, a large vacuum oven if you like so you remove all the gas from between the, uh, the plates and then you just put a little droplet of the liquid crystal at that edge and it will start to fill those plates just naturally through the capillary forces just as water wicks up the side of a, a glass for example it's pulled up by the capillary forces and you can eventually fill your cell if it's as something as big as a tv that would take 10 hours or so so it's done differently for big tvs but but that filling process that, that i described with the vacuum oven etc that's how your uh, calculators and watches would would be fabricated so finally i'd like to ask how you get liquid crystals to actually produce images on a screen well that's a also a difficult question and to understand it you really need to understand the polarization of light so when you wear sunglasses on a, a sunny day uh, that's because the light that's scattered by the blue sky is actually polarized which means its electric field is varying in one particular direction or mainly in one direction so by wearing polarized glasses you can cut out one particular direction of the electric field and let the other through so all liquid crystals use this property of polarization where you put polarizers like polarized glasses either side but perpendicular to each other so theoretically you shouldn't get any light through because one polarization is stopped by the first polarizer it then goes through the glass and uh, is stopped by the second polarizer which is um, perpendicular to the first polarizer so that would appear black but if you put the liquid crystal in the way because it has this crystal like property of having different refractive indices depending on what the polarization is you can arrange it so that the light is all transmitted so you have a light on one polarizer being rotated through 90 degrees so it then goes through the second polarizer and that gives you your normal white state and then when you switch it you break down that structure you no longer get that twisting of the polarization and so you, so you cut out the light so the liquid crystal is acting as a, a modulator it's not emitting light like a, an led or a light bulb it is actually just changing the light that's instant on it uh, and, and modulating it either transmitting or reflecting that light or absorbing it and stopping it by you know, the use of the polarizers.